free. Ever since I was a child, I can remember seeing my guardian angel. The first time I saw him, I was 11 years old. My friends and I were playing, jumping off the roof into the pool. You know those above ground blue swimming pools? Well, we had been jumping from the roof of the garage into the pool. Listen, I had done this like five times already. And I remember running, jumping, and coming to the realization that I wasn't going to make it into the water. I don't know if it was because my legs were tired or I took a wrong step. I'm still not sure to this day. But let me tell you what I'm 100% completely sure of. I was flying through the air and I knew I was going to be short, looking down at the ground, saying to myself, okay, I'm about to break something. When I saw this angel, no, he didn't have wings. He just looked like a man. Touch me under my foot, gently push my foot straight up into the air. My trajectory changes and I splash down in the pool. The next time I saw him, it was my senior year in high school. We had just finished the game between our crosstown rivalry. And every year after this game, there's this huge bonfire and there's this strip where everybody goes racing cars. This night, I had been drinking and decided that I was going to race my truck. Listen, I bet $250 against one of the kids from the other school that I could beat him. And I remember climbing into the front seat of my car, cranking it up and looking over in the passenger seat. And there he was, my guardian angel. Now pause for a moment. Some of you may be saying, well, guardian angels have wings. No, let me tell you what my guardian angel looked like. Now, he looked like an older version of me. No older than 28, 29, 30 years old. He was muscular and strong looking, but he wasn't super big or buff. He's sitting right there in the passenger seat, looking at me like you know better than to do this. But I had made up in my mind, I am going to race for this money. Understand the truck is cranked up. We're ready to race. People are all around. And when I go to hit the gas, the truck just shuts off. Again, let me paint the picture for you. I'm in the right lane. He's in the left lane. There's a girl in between us with a rag in her hand, twirling it all around in the air. The headlights are on. The crowd is cheering. Everybody's excited. I hit the gas to take off. He takes off flying. And guess what? My truck goes nowhere. Now get this 10 minutes later. Another two guys go to racing. The guy who was in my lane races off. A deer comes out of the woods, crosses the road. He hits that deer, swerves down into a ditch, hits a tree, and goes through the windshield. Grand opening and grand closing for that party. Police, ambulance, kids getting arrested for drinking underage. It was just totally ridiculous, and it was one hell of a night. Now, if that wasn't traumatic enough, the next time I saw my guardian angel... Was way worse. This is when I went hiking on Eagle Rock Loop in Arkansas. I'm 25 years old, coming out of a bad relationship, and I just wanted to get away, take a trip, be by myself, go to a place where nobody would be. I get to the location. My decision is to hike five miles in and five miles back. Understand that trail is 26 miles long. I had no intention of going any further than five miles. I'm about four miles in, trapped inside my head, thinking about this breakup I just went through and about life and how I'm not where I want to be. When I realized that it's quiet, way too freaking quiet in the woods for my taste. And that's when I see what looks like a big black dude walk across the trail up ahead of me. And I don't say that to be offensive. I just figured it was a tall black dude with like a furry coat on out for a hike and he crossed the trail because he was walking on two legs. At that moment in time, it didn't register me as a threat. So I just keep walking. But listen to this. I get right to about the area where I saw him and I get this feeling that I need to stop. But I'm like, nah, you're being paranoid. Just keep going. We're going to get to the five miles. I take another 10 steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I remember it clear as day. And I knew without a doubt in that moment what was going on. My guardian angel was there with his hand on my chest, holding me back because I felt a force physically stopping me from moving. However, what he did next was unlike anything I've ever encountered. Now, pause right here for a moment in the story. Let me explain a little bit more to you. I knew without a doubt that this was my guardian angel. 
and I'll tell you how I know. Because I turn around to go in the opposite direction. Because I'm afraid, frankly. And when I turn and take a few steps, I hear what sounds like someone took a boulder and threw it through a bunch of tree limbs. Turning, looking back over my shoulder, it's what everyone describes as a dog man, except for this thing is blackish gray, and it has this head of what looks like a freaking hyena. It's suspended in midair, arms spread wide, claws pointed in my direction, and I see my guardian angel standing there holding this thing by the neck, suspended in midair. And this look of concern comes across his face, and I know deep down inside, I need to run and put some distance between it and me. And so that's what I do. I take off running down that trail as fast as I can. And as I run away, I hear what sounds like World War II going on. Tree limbs snapping, trees falling over, some of the most frightful growling noises I've ever heard. Imagine for a moment, you're running through the woods all alone, and you know what you just experienced, what you just saw was 100% real. There's no hallucination. You can smell it. You can feel it. That's what was going on with me. I ran for a solid 400 yards until I was out of breath. I remember the fatigue setting in, breathing heavy, bending over at the waist, saying to myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to run all the way back to my vehicle. Taking a deep breath, standing back up, and starting to run again. This goes on for another 100 yards. And then I feel that pressure on my chest. The same pressure I felt on my chest before that thing jumped out of the trees, I felt it again. But this time I felt this peace. And I knew I didn't have to run anymore. I just felt like whatever it was, whatever happened, it was over. And it was right there in that moment that all the panic, all the adrenaline, everything drained out of me. And I felt refreshed. I stopped breathing heavy. Stopped sweating. I mean, it was almost as if nothing happened. And I know if you listen to the story, you're saying to myself, this makes no sense. This guy's laughing. Some people may say, I don't believe in angels. Some people may say it was an alien. Listen, all I can tell you is this. This is what happened to me. I wasn't afraid. And so I walked the rest of the way back to my vehicle, got in and went home. <laughs>